Today we'll be building an operator that can read a custom resource definition, which I'm going to call a pod tracker. Pod tracker will be a chat op service where I can send notifications to when a pod changes or updates. I'll implement Slack, but the idea is to make it generic enough for any other service. Cube Builder is a framework for building Kubernetes APIs with CRDs. While you can build one of your own, it takes you quickly through the hard work by generating a large boilerplate with everything you need to start implementing the business logic. I'm initiating a domain in which my resources will live. This will become more clear later on when we build the YAML for the new resource. So I'm just following KubeBuilder's basic instructions, making sure that I have all the libraries installed. The next thing I wanna do is take a look at the files generated. Uh, we'll start with the make utility file that does most of the heavy lifting. It does that by generating manifests using customized templates. It installs the CRDs on the cluster. It can run the program locally and even push to a Docker registry. The main.go file is in charge of starting the controller's process, manage high availability, report health to a dedicated endpoint, and so on. If you keep browsing, you'll find additional informational files but for now, I want to jump straight ahead into generating the controller and the APIs so we can start implementing the logic. I'm using KubeBuilder to create an API, which is a kind of a new way to communicate with the cluster. I do this by creating a new resource that is handled with my controller. You can build controllers that just handle existing resources or create new resources without actually a dedicated controller. But for the sake of tutorial and showing uh, all of the abilities, I'm going to choose to build both. Now we're ready to start pouring some logic into the controller and the CRD. So I'll start by editing the types file, which holds the specification of the new resource I created. Pod tracker spec is where I can add my custom fields. I think it makes sense to have a name and an object of the tool I'll use to report to. I'll implement that later on, but for now I'm going to call it a reporter. The reporter will be its own object for the sake of order and generic implementation. So let's create the struct for the reporter. I'll add kind, which in my case will be slack, a key, which I assume is required for any type of authentication, and lastly, a channel that makes sense to me right now in the context of Slack. Maybe in other implementations, it could be different or just an optional field. One of the many useful and cool features of the Go plugin is creating JSON tags automatically. So I'm using that to help as the controller will not run without them. In addition to spec, as you may already know, each component has a status field. If I'd build this for production, I'd probably set a at minimum a list of tracked pods so I can quickly query the controller as a user with kubectl and receive the list of unaccounted for pods in my system. However, and for the sake of simplicity, I will not implement it right now to keep things as short as possible. So now that the CRD is ready, it's time to implement the controller. The most important part of any controller is its reconciliation loop. That's a basic fundamental concept in Kubernetes. When you do anything in a cluster, for example, like creating a pod, you're asking the system to change its state. Then a reconciliation loop starts running, trying to reconcile the request you made with the system and bring it to the desired state. Back to the code. What's generated is starting with the Kubernetes logger I don't plan to expand on it, but I'll link below to its documentation, which I really recommend reading before working with. Let's quickly test the controller and have it print my log info line that I just added. Make run will test the process locally. It will run against any Kubernetes cluster that's currently configured, and I have something preset running locally. So I can see the controller is triggered, so we're good to go. Now, before going any further, since we're mainly dealing with pods here, rather than the CRD which we created, it's important to add a watcher over pods so that the controller is also triggered with any pod event, like 
creation, updates, removals, etc. In real use case, it would probably be best to only listen to specific types of events, for example, only creation. But again, for the sake of simplicity and speed, I will not do that right now. You can see that I set handle pod events as the name of the handler function that would deal with the pod watcher. So let's implement it. A handler of the watcher takes the event as a parameter and returns a reconciliation request list. Once it finishes its work, it sends the request back to the reconciliation loop where the actual logic is expected to take care of these events as well as the others. For now, just for testing, I only want to handle pods on the default namespace, so I don't see events of all the existing pods in the cluster, like the ones from cube system namespace, for example. For other pods, I'll just return an empty list, and this basically means that I'm not calling the reconciliation loop. The next step is to create a namespace name. This is a special type of object in Kubernetes that basically describes a unique resource in the cluster because there could only be one resource name on a single namespace. You'll see this type of object a lot when dealing with controllers. Once that's ready, I'll try to actually retrieve the pod object from the cluster to see that it's really there. And for example, I'm not dealing with an event of a non-existing resource like a deleted one. Lastly, I want to handle non-annotated objects only, so that if a pod has the annotation that we decided is a convention, I know that it's accounted for and the controller knows that as well. You can see that I've set the pod object annotation to be my example annotation, and then I need to send an update request to the cluster, which I'm doing using the reconciler object method. I'll finish by returning the reconcile requests. For now, it's going to be only an empty list just for the sake of testing, but later on, we're going to change it. For the previous process runs, I was actually using an existing Kubernetes cluster. Let's quickly create a local new one using K3D. If you don't know K3D, be sure to check out my video on that explaining how you can provision a local light cluster in just a few seconds. According to K3D, my cluster is up, so let's change the context and start talking to it. Everything looks good, so it's time to run the controller process against my new cluster's context. So like I've ran earlier, running the process is done with make run. And there seemed to be a little bit of a problem where the cluster doesn't know my CRD. And this makes sense. A custom resource is not something I can expect a new cluster to know unless I've installed it. I'll do that using make install. And once that's installed, I want to rerun the process and see that everything works as expected. Now that the controller can run, let's see if it reports the logs events regarding pods in the default namespace. I'll create one with Nginx image and that will be the name. You can see multiple events that say found the managed pod like I've configured. For now, the controller picks up every event of the pod as it changes, but in a production environment, we'd probably want to limit that to support only one event. Now that I know the events are picked up by the watcher, it's time to actually send them over to the reconciler and implement there the logic that reports to Slack. Let's move over to the reconcile function and start by trying to add a new resource and fetch it from the cluster. A quick reminder, the, this function has two different triggers. One is the watcher we configured below for pod events. The other, and the main one, is events that involve my new CRD, the one we call the pod tracker. In order to test only one trigger, I'll temporarily comment out the requests returned from the pod handler function. And let's make run so that the process runs and in parallel I'll open another shell where I'm going to deploy the custom resource from. So let's create the YAML for our resource and start filling it out. We're starting out by setting the API version which is the version we've configured to begin with um, and that's where I said that it'll become more clear later on. So that's our toolbox at version 1. And the kind is going to be a pod tracker, and that's the name of the resource that the cluster should be using. And in the spec, 
similar to how we've configured the resource in the types file. I'm setting name and the report object that's holding kind, channel, and key. So I can now kubectl apply the pod tracker as I would with any standard resource and see the controller logs above. Similarly to other resources, I can now kubectl get and describe my pod tracker. KG stands for kubectl get and KD for describe. So my pod tracker custom resource is retrieved from the cluster together with the template, the status, and so on. It's now time to start the real implementation. My idea is not having just one pod tracker, but multiple resources, each handling different type of report. Like I mentioned before, it can be email, telegram, uh, teams, and really any messaging or notification solution. So to do that, I'd like to get the pod tracker list, which is a list object that holds all the installed resources. This is auto-generated for me by Cube Controller, and it's already available. If the list is empty, this means there is no pod tracker installed, and I can return an empty result and a nil error. This is basically the convention that tells the reconciler there's nothing to do, and it can wait for the next iteration. If there are, however, existing objects, we can iterate through them and report to each one. Again, I'm simplifying the code here and picking only the first item in the list, which for the sake of demonstration is my Slack reporter. Upon finding a pod tracker, we're calling the report function, which here only holds logic for Slack. I will not bore you with the Slack implementation as this is not the focus here, but the code is in the link below in my GitHub repo, along with everything created in this tutorial. Feel free to shoot comments or even open issues in the repo if you have any questions. Now that the reconciler sends a report to every pod tracker it finds, and we have the Slack implementation ready to go, let's quickly head over to Slack management panel just to show a few important details in case you're implementing this locally. The important bits here after you created the Slack application is go to OAuth and permissions and use the bot user OAuth token. Install that to the workspace after you've configured in your scopes to have permissions for chat write because that's what we want the bot to do. Once the permissions are set and the bot is installed and in the channel, you're ready to go. Time to install the bot key. I use kubectl edit to change the object directly on the cluster. I'll verify this by getting the object, making sure the key appears with grep. Okay, moment of truth. I have Slack here on the side with the bots channel open where you can see I've added the operator example bot. In my NeoVim terminal, I run the controller process and in another Tmux pane, I'll try to create a container. Hopefully we'll see a Slack report. And boom, you can see the messages both in the controller log and on Slack, mission accomplished.